What up you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Janelle Sequira, back with another video. And today, I really wanted to get on here and do another chit chat, get ready with me. The last one I did, it just felt really good, you know? And you guys watched it, you know, got a pretty decent amount of views. So I figured I'd get on here and do another one because I am getting ready for a full day of content creation. I kinda wanna do something new on my channel. So today we are gonna be discussing the black girl luxury movement. I know this has been like kind of a hot topic, I wanna say for the past, past few months or so. And I just kinda wanna weigh in on it and give my own little two cents on the whole topic, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, whatever else I feel like talking about. So before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that bell button so you're notified every single time I post a new video. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Um, as you can see, my hair is looking real crazy, okay? Tracks are showing, things are happening, and we don't know what's going on. So <laughs> this is like a U part wig situation, okay? This is actually for my hair brand. So today's video is sponsored by my very own hair brand, but which has a new name now, and you guys are the first ones to get to know what the new name of the brand is going to be because you are my supporters. You are the reason that I keep on going, okay? So shout out to y'all for watching my videos. It's been a rough ride on my channel, okay? Um, it's all over the place right now. I'm just trying to get my footing, trying to get into kind of a new niche here. It's been rough. So shout out to my riders who just show up. There's about, I want to say 500 to 1,000 of you who really show up for me. And I just want to thank you so, so much. And a couple of you are actually my customers. So yeah, y'all the realists. I love y'all to death. And you're going to be the first ones to know what's going on with my business as well as the people on my email list too. As you may or may not know, I have talked about it a little bit on my channel, but I am rebranding my business, Zero Gravity Hair Company. We're getting a whole revamp, including a new name. As much as I loved the name Zero Gravity, I wanted something a little bit more simple, something that I don't necessarily have to explain, something that conveys the aesthetic that I'm trying to go for, all that good stuff. So the new name for my kinky curly hair business is Plush Curl Collection and we sell kinky curly wigs, extensions, clip-ins, all that good stuff, okay. And one of the new products on the site is going to be this kinky straight U-part wig. It's actually called a thin part wig according to my vendor, but I don't know child, it's giving you part wig, so that's what we're gonna go with. We have other options, or we will be having other options, okay? The Luna wig will still be there, child. She is my number one. That wig is amazing. I, she's hanging up drying in the bathroom right now. She looks fantastic after what has it been, like three or four months? Beautiful, great investment. Anyways, yeah, so that's what's going on in my business for anybody who cares. Um, so basically I said all that to say is this is how I'll be styling my hair today. So as you can see, I have a little piece of hair out here and it has already been flat ironed, but I may need to go over it like one or two times, which is no problem because I only had to do like two passes anyways. But right now I'm gonna focus on straightening the actual wig. I'm not using any products for the wig, for my hair. I use a little bit of a heat protectant, but that's it. There's no other products in my hair. That's how I moisturize my hair now, y'all. I just wash my hair and I use a good conditioner. So for the wig, I'm gonna heat my flat iron up to about 420. Yeah, I swear, every time I record, I have to shave my underarms and I apologize, okay? I. So first of all, before I even get to talking, I want you guys to let me know in the comments down below um, what do you guys think of the black girl luxury movement? What are your thoughts? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you have, are you kind of in between, you know? What are your thoughts? Cause I know that there are a lot of different opinions on it. Go ahead and leave your comment. I'm gonna give you a second. You done? Okay, okay. So, so basically if you don't know what the black girl luxury movement is, it's just, it's kind of exactly what it sounds like. Honestly, it's, black women who you know live a certain lifestyle a higher lifestyle i would say and they just basically showcase that lifestyle you know and whatever that looks like for them so for the most part what we're seeing is i need to put a clip right here and then we can sell this wig because that child that's not gonna work 
Okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, what what we've been seeing mostly from this movement is black women kind of showing off, you know, their fancy vacations, their nice apartments, their luxury purchases, designer purchases, the Louis Vuittons, the Chanel purses, the Dior, all that good stuff. And that's kind of what the black girl luxury movement is, is basically black women showing off these things and putting it out on the internet you know i feel like some good examples of people who like embody this movement would be like jackie Ina, uh maybe Aaliyah's face they very clearly embody this movement whether they're doing it on purpose or not you know um mostly Aaliyah's face just kind of showcases her life she just does a lot of vlogs and stuff like that so it might not be on purpose you know it's just the way she lives her life Jackie Ina kind of has dedicated her brand to like showing black women in luxury because she believes that we should all indulge there was a TikTok that was going around it was kind of viral and no not kind of viral it went it was viral it was a viral TikTok of a black girl talking about the black girl luxury movement and her issue with it um, basically, if I can find it, I'll like post it here. But if I can't find it, then I can't really remember exactly what she was saying. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Hold on. Realize what my issue is with the black luxury movement because I couldn't pinpoint it before, but now I have. Um, I feel as if it tells black women, right? Because it does actually say this. Black women, you deserve the world. You deserve all of the nicest things. And black women do deserve the world. They do deserve all of the nicest things, but all of the nicest things like all across the board. But the black luxury movement is like, you deserve the world. And then it's like, here's a bag, here's a vacation. Here is a photo of cottage core and life looking easy when life isn't actually that way. And I think it's because it's easier to acquire stuff than it is to take a deep look and be like, well, black women deserve protections within their romantic relationships. So what are we going to do about that? Black women deserve to go to hospitals and not die while they're giving birth. So what are we gonna do about that? Black women deserve to go- Here's my issue with that. So basically the gist of that is she basically is what it sounds like to me, trying to insert politics and activism into the black girl luxury when really the whole point of the black girl luxury movement is like in spite of all of these things that we have to go through all of these things that we have to face every day you deserve luxury you deserve nice things you deserve to just enjoy life and exist as a black like exist you just deserve to exist and enjoy your existence for a little bit because it's so hard to you do that you know we go through a lot as black women we are the most marginalized group we are the like it doesn't get any more minority than a black woman you know <laughs> being a black being black and then being a woman is like it don't get any more pressed than that really like we're pretty much hated in any part of the country that in any part of the world that we go to you know so I understand her concern, but we already have all these other movements going on, you know? We have the Me Too movement. We have Black Lives Matter, although, you know, that has its issues, but like the core message <laughs> is, you know, what we have. We have these other movements, and so we can just keep that right there where they are. Um, I don't really think we need to insert that into the black girl luxury movement because that then defeats the whole entire purpose of the movement. Um, that's kind of my whole thoughts on it. I absolutely love the black girl luxury movement. Yes, it has, there are areas that can be critiqued, you know, as with anything. Promoting capitalism and materialism, yes, that's kind of an issue, but like, I just wanted to insert that like, I do not think that we should brush over these things because I kind of just flew past it in the video. I definitely think that any criticisms about the materialism are definitely valid. So I just want to put that there. Like we should not necessarily promote materialism. I don't really care if someone is materialistic as long as they're not hurting anybody else. You know, like if you love your your stuff, girl, then that's you. I, I know this is probably, it's probably an unpopular opinion, but I don't think there's anything wrong with liking stuff 
there is a point where it does become an issue and you know it should not be over the top and you shouldn't be consuming things and just buying and buying and buying and buying stuff because then you get into but then you get into like sustainability and you know you're just wasting stuff you're buying all the stuff you're not wearing it you're throwing it away blah 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 definitely don't want to skip over all of that but i kind of wanted to focus on the positives of the movement and not the criticisms because you know it's a conversation to be had about these designer brands that don't necessarily even care for our people and should we be supporting them and all that that's that's a totally different conversation for another day too but i did want to at least acknowledge that what is so bad about showing other black women that you can live this lifestyle that we have seen white women live for decades, for centuries, that, you know, we, we weren't even allowed in these spaces a hundred years ago, you know? Not even a hundred years ago. It ain't even been a hundred years yet. <laughs> we weren't allowed in these spaces not too long ago. So it's like, it's, I think it's super important for us to show that we can be in these spaces. We can exist here in these spaces, you know? I think it's really important to say you deserve a break from the BS that goes on in the world. You deserve to go on a nice vacation and splurge, treat yourself, you know? And luxury doesn't always have to be you know, lavish vacations and expensive purses and shoes and, you know, the most, it doesn't have to be the most, you know? Luxury can literally be, um, I think, whatever you want it to be that's like outside of the necessities, I guess. So like you need water, you need clothes, but you only need a certain amount, you know, you don't need to have a closet full of clothes. You only really need like seven outfits, you know, one for every day or whatever. Saying a luxury is anything, a luxury to me is anything that is outside of your necessities. So anything that you don't necessarily need that you're able to get to is a luxury. You don't need to take a bubble bath. <laughs> but it feels nice, it, it's relaxing, and that's a luxury. Regardless of the price tag, the price tag has nothing to do with luxury in my opinion. Yeah, I'm sorry if I keep touching the mic, y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna work on my sound one of these days. Um, but yeah, so I think it's super important for us to have this black girl luxury movement and show up and coming black women, younger, you know, black, little black girls that like, you can have this lifestyle so that we don't have to have such enormous cases of imposter syndrome like the other day I was shopping well I wasn't shopping but I was at the mall with my cousin and she is she can afford designer items and whatnot so you know I was just there for moral support we wanted to get out the house she wanted to do some shopping she wanted to get something so I was just there for moral support and to you know maybe deter her from making poor financial decisions help her decide on what to buy you know I was just there window shopping okay manifesting I was there window shopping and manifesting because chow chow I could not afford anything in there yet so there's a couple of things that I could probably buy if I wanted to but we, we just ain't there yet we were there and I think like halfway through the shopping when she had bought, I'd say maybe two items at this point, she said something that was like, I think it was relating to her mom or, or something. Like she just felt a type of way about spending the money that she was spending on, you know, these items. She just kind of felt some type of way. You could just like hear the imposter syndrome. And I was like, girl, that's just, you know, that's just the way you were raised trying to get to you. Like, it's just imposter syndrome. Like, it's okay. You got it so you can spend it. You know, there's nothing wrong with this. All right. And she was like, yeah, girl, you're right. You're right. You're right. So I'm just like, it's so important for us to like see more of that so that we don't have to feel this way when we do, when we are able to indulge in these types of things, you know, because white women got to do it all the time. They get no backlash for living these lifestyles because I mean, you're white, you, the privilege is, has always been there. So <laughs> we are the oppressed group. And so it's not normal. It's not as normal to see us in these spaces. So I just think it's important. I think the Black Girl Luxury Movement is important and it should be here to stay. And I hope to see it grow. And I hope to see more black women in the Black Women in Luxury Movement. I hope to be a part of that movement, which brings me to um, the rebrand for my brand. <laughs> so basically, 
Zero Gravity Hair Company was very cute, okay? I love the name. I think it was super creative, super aesthetic, super all of that. The aesthetic did not match the price and quality of my items. So I'm really selling luxury items, okay? My my products are not cheap. I don't want them to be. <laughs> I want it to be, I want it to be high quality products. You know, for not a super expensive price, I would say that it's like affordable luxury, you know, because a pretty penny up front, but the hair is gonna last you a really long time. You know, the hair is gonna last, um, it's gonna be quality, it's not gonna be shedding everywhere. You guys see me styling this hair right now and girl, there's no shedding happening right now. You know, as you guys can see, like it's quality stuff. And I just feel like the aesthetic of the brand didn't really match. You know, I just want my brand to kind of be a part of said black girl luxury movement, you know? I just want my brand to kind of embody that movement is what I get, is what I'm trying to say, I guess. And so that requires a whole rebrand, a whole like new aesthetic, and honestly, a new name, which I wasn't, as much as I love the name, I wasn't super attached to it. So it wasn't that big of, it's not big of a deal for me to just change the name, especially since the brand is very new. We just launched in March. Yeah, so that's just my little two cents on the black women in luxury movement and a little, you know, shameless plug about my brand and how we're trying to basically be a part of that movement and embody that movement and just encourage women and inspire black women. And also, oh, here's the kicker. So here is my one critique, well, not one critique, but here's one of my critiques of the black girl in luxury movement. And it is that every time you see, or most of the times I will say, most of the times when you see these posts, a very European inspired look, and I'm just being real, like that's what you see for them. I have a whole Pinterest board full of like black women in luxury photos, pictures, videos, whatever. And photos and pictures are the same thing, Janelle. I have a whole folder full of this and most of these women are wearing straight hairstyles, you know, more European looking hairstyles. And while I, don't, I have no issue with that because I love a good Brazilian straight, Brazilian wavy, don't get me wrong. I do, but I would just like to see more kinky hairstyles, more Afro textured hairstyles in the space. And I feel like there's nothing wrong with me wanting to see more of that, you know? I just wanna see more of our natural textures, even if it's a little exaggerated, <laughs> you know? Even if it's a little exaggerated, even if there's some clip-ins involved or, you know, a kinky straight wig involved or whatever, like at least it is, a more natural look for us, you know? And I just wanna see more of that. And, you know, I totally understand why we don't see a lot of it in the Black or Luxury movement, because oftentimes to get to that luxury, at least as it comes to actually expensive items and designer items and whatnot, sometimes you have to kind of play into respectability politics a little bit. If you are working nine to five in a corporate space, maybe you haven't reached the level where you can just wear your natural hair. Maybe you haven't reached a confidence level to re wear your natural hair in these spaces, or maybe it's just not in your best interest to do so. Like there's plenty of reasons why. Also, I know how hard it can be to take care of natural hair if you don't really know what you're doing and you are working in a career that you just don't have a lot of time you know i understand like i will i'm a wig and weave wearer you know <laughs> like i will never knock black women for wearing weaves and wigs and all that stuff because it's a part of our culture it's a way of life you know what i'm saying like and sometimes it is absolutely necessary for survival purposes and sometimes it's just because we want to but i would just like to see more kinky textures in the space you know and Instead of coming after the girls who are in the movement and asking them to do it, I'm just gonna do it myself. <laughs> you feel me? Like, I'm just gonna bring it to y'all because maybe y'all just don't have the, op like there's just not a lot of options for kinky curly extensions. There's a few of us out here, but there's not a lot. There's way more people selling straight and wavy bundles than there are, you know, people selling kinky and curly, you know, textures, so. Oh, we got one shed here. 
Um, so yeah, I just kind of want to normalize our natural textures in the space a little bit more. Um, again, even if it is a little bit more exaggerated and there's extensions and whatnot included, because again, the white women do it too. <laughs> and I don't want that to be my reasoning for everything. Like not just because the white women are doing it, but because like we just deserve to see ourselves in these spaces existing as we are. And so, you know, I started this YouTube channel because I wanted to see more of my hair type being represented because I just feel like at the time I felt like my hair type was so different. I still feel like it's so different from everybody else's that was on YouTube. And now I want to infiltrate the black women in luxury, the black girl luxury space with my kinky textures. Okay guys, so I am all done with this hair and I think it looks really good. What y'all think? What y'all think? Okay, it's giving... I don't know what it's giving, but it's giving, okay? It's giving what I was supposed to have gave. So this wig is definitely not for beginners, okay? Um, it is for the more advanced. If you're more experienced with like you part wigs and leave outs and stuff like that, then this is definitely for you. But if you are like new to the extension game, to the wig game, I might, I probably wouldn't recommend it. It's also good for girls who get silk presses all the time because your hair is probably more heat trained and your hair will probably stay straighter for a longer period of time. I do not get my hair straightened that often, but I only plan on wearing this style for like two days. And then after that, my hair starts to, you know, get a little crazy and I'm not re-straightening re this, you know what I'm saying? So um, let me know what you guys think of this hair in the comment box down below. Comment box, is that a thing? Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this hair. So yeah, this hair is super duper soft. It is so, it just feels so plush, you know? <laughs> so this is the full length of the hair. Um, I forget how, exactly how long it is, but I'll put it right here on the screen for you guys. When I'm standing up, it reaches to my lower back. So if you do like this hair as much as I do, or if you like kinky curly hair extensions, clip-ins, wigs, closure wigs, you part wigs, you name it. If you like that stuff, make sure you go follow Plush Curl Collection right now, okay? The website will be up very soon, so stay tuned. It's about to be lit, y'all. It's about to be lit. So thank you guys so much for listening to me ramble on about things. And but yeah, don't forget to follow me on social media. My handle is at Janelle Sequira XO. All the information will be in the description box down below. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.